Hi friends, Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Samvia. Today we're gonna to explore six different ways to curl hair. And these are all really techniques that we know are working towards the look that's very popular right now, which definitely is a little bit more loose almost wavy sort of texture. We don't see a ton of the kind of orphan Annie <laughs> type curls at this point. So we're not gonna get into really tight curling iron work. It's more things that are gonna create this, that big, more open beachy wave texture. So this is my good friend, Tiana. She's actually a hairdresser too here in Medford, Oregon. And I love that we're gonna work with her hair because she's got a skinny texture. You can see there's not a ton of density here. And this is a common fiber that's difficult to get great texture out of. And so we wanted to use Tiana so that you could see how you can work with this texture and get really beautiful results. So the, one of the first things that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pre-texture her hair with the Samvia Signature Series Texture Iron, but we're gonna do it in a way that's kind of subtle so you don't necessarily see a lot of the texture, but by changing the texture of her hair and actually kind of adding just a touch of roughness to her silky soft hair, it's gonna help to expand the curling wave and it's also gonna help it to last much, much longer. So we're gonna talk about the pre-texturing first, then we'll get into each of the techniques and you'll see them start to finish. So big video, it's gonna be a little bit of a extensive video for you guys, but I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Let's get after it. All right, so as I said, we are going to pre-texture Tiana's hair just because she does have that skinnier fiber. Plus it's very, very soft. And sometimes really soft hair, it's nice to touch, but it doesn't hold a curl or a wave or a texture very well. So by adding this little bit of texture to her hair in advance, it'll hold the iron, the shape of the iron much better, and it's going to last much, much longer. The thing that we find is on this very, very soft, very healthy hair, a lot of times, the shape just doesn't want to hold all day long. So we're going to take this section and we are going to start with some iron shape 11 for two reasons. Number one, we want to add just a little bit of buffer to the hair as far as the heat goes. But then the iron shape 11 has a nice soft hold to it that isn't going to get crispy and crunchy. So that we mask a little bit of the texture, we're going to take the weave comb and we're going to just do kind of a chunky textured weave, almost like you were doing a really kind of blocky type of highlight. Then we'll take the iron and we're just gonna lightly imprint all the way down the strand. So you can see, I'm not getting crazy with it. I'm just kind of tapping through the entire strand. And even from the distance that you're seeing it on video, it's not gonna be a really bold texture, but then once you comb the smooth hair back into it, that really helps to mask some of that texture and makes it really pretty subtle. It works much better if you take finer sections and it seems like it can be a little tedious, but if you use finer sections, you'll find that you'll get through the process much, much faster. And the nice thing is we're pre-building some hold into the hair with that iron shape as well. We're using the texture iron on the color treated setting. It does not go above 392 degrees. Tiana does have a little bit of color in her hair and it's kind of finer, so we don't need the super high heat of the high temperature. And at 392, we're gonna make sure that we don't take the low light back out of her hair, which is a big discovery for us that higher temperatures can actually destroy the color in the hair. So I'm gonna continue on. I'm just going to do a light texture throughout Tiana's entire head using the Iron Shape 11 and that color treated setting. Okay, now that the texture iron set is finished, we've got a little bit more bulk to her hair and that texture again, it's gonna give it some more grip so it holds the curl really nicely. But what's cool is if you look, you don't really see it that bold through the hair. 
if you don't mind seeing that little bit of texture, you could do every single strand of hair and it's gonna expand the hair even more. So that's an option as well. The first technique that we're going to do is called a one and a half wrap. <laughs> So what we mean by a one and a half wrap is you're going to wrap it around the iron one and a half times. The reason for that is we're seeing that the textures that are really popular right now are a little bit more lazy and more lived in. And by doing just that one and a half wrap, it's going to keep the ends more loose. It's just gonna focus more of the texture through the mid strand of the hair. We're gonna start with the one and a half inch spring curling iron. And we're doing this because we know that many of you that are consumers out there, this is the iron that you're picking up. So we wanna show you how to do it with that. But we're also gonna show you with a Marcel curling iron. So if you are using more of that style of curling iron, which is what we recommend for professionals, if you're using that type of iron, technique's the same, but it's gonna have a little different touch to it. So you can see the section size that we're taking is really based on her hair density because she does that have that finer texture of hair. We can take a rather large section here. It's a good one and a half inches, maybe even more um, in height and about two inches wide. We're going to work with the iron down, but you don't have to do this. A lot of times people are like, well, how do I do this to myself at home? And to be honest with you, it's all about how can you get your body into a position that it doesn't hurt <laughs> and you can achieve the, the finish. We're going to open up the spoon of the iron. So we're just gonna press that down and we're going to use this pretty much just like a wand. So we're gonna wrap the hair once and then wrap it a half again. Notice we're holding the ends out. And then we're going to do just a slight violining technique with the hair, and that allows the hair to expand and move a bit on the surface of the iron. If you hold it still, that's fine too, but what you're gonna notice is the pattern of the curl is gonna be much more predictable. We want the pattern to be a little unpredictable here. So you can see a nice loose wave. Make sure that as you're working with your techniques that you're giving the hair time to cool. It's probably one of the biggest, biggest mistakes that we see people at home. They'll get a nice hot, hot curl in there and then they start grabbing a hold of it and pulling their hands through it. The curl is forming as the hair cools, not as it heats. The heat is actually breaking down the bonds to make the hair able to form. The cooling process is actually just as important, if not more important than the actual heating process. So you wanna leave this alone and make sure it cools before you mess with it. So we're gonna take a similar size section as we travel up the head. Definitely check in with the density because the density can change from section to section. So you might have to vary the size of the the section based on where you're at on the head. So let's do this one with the Marcel iron. Now with a Marcel iron, you have the option of just opening up the spoon. This is our artist series Marcel two in one. You have the option of just opening up the spoon and then wrapping. But here's what's kind of cool about this one is you can actually press this button right here and the spoon comes off. So you can use this as a curling wand. You just put the arrows together and lock that into position so that there's no rotation. Now, you don't even have to deal with that spoon. You can just use it as a wand. So again, we're gonna wrap it once and then half around again. And then just that little violining technique will help to stretch that mid strand out. We're keeping the tension pretty gentle so that we're not pulling on her hair. Let the heat do the work. Then once we have the heat in there, we let it drop and allow that to cool. As we move around the side of the head, again, adjust to the density of hair. And on this particular shape, we're going to move around the head in the same direction. We're wrapping away from the face here. You can alternate working the curls in different directions. And that will also add to that natural feel to it.
So pretty simple technique, and this one is very, very current, we feel, because again, it's gonna give us a very loose sort of texture, and you can see the ends are gonna be left out straight. So um, this is what we're seeing a lot on Instagram and social media. So um, this is very, very current for you. So I'm gonna continue working around the head in somewhat equal section sizes. Again, if you vary the section size, it's just gonna to add to that natural feel. We're gonna keep the curl wrapping back and away from the face for this specific technique. We'll vary it in another technique. And I'm gonna keep using the wand just because it's easier and simpler. Now that we've finished both sides of Tiana's head with the one and a half wrap, this is what it looks like after it's cooled, but before we've really messed with it at all. So the final step is now we're gonna run our hands through, add some separation and texture to it. Typically at this point, I would add a little bit of finishing product to the hair, but since we've still got five more looks to show you, we don't wanna to put too much product in the hair. If we just kinda of tickle through with our hands, that'll loosen up the texture you see we just get this really nice lived in loose wave and that texture that we added before we started the curl pattern gives it a nice expansive feel gives it some fullness and some definition look at how much body that has even on Tiana's fi finer hair texture so Again, the one and a half wrap is a great way to get this very loose, very lived in sort of feel, especially now where we're seeing the ends be left out more straight. One and a half wraps, really simple, really easy, and it gives you the look that a lot of clients are asking for. Now we'll move into a technique called wrap and twist. This again is going to give us a really super lived in sort of feel. It'll give us a little bit more of a defined curl than the last technique, but it's also going to leave the ends more loose and more straight. So again, very current for us. We're gonna start by once again, doing what we always do, which is section. So we're gonna start with a similar size section. And remember, you can always vary the section size, and we highly recommend that you do that. Play with a lot of different section sizes because then you're going to see how those different section sizes affect the actual end result. So we'll start with this on the spring iron. This is the one and a half inch signature series spring iron. And we'll do that because I know a lot of you at home are still using spring iron. So we're going to just allow the hair to slip through the iron first and that's going to introduce a little bit of heat and then we wrap the hair around the barrel and then we untwist the hair and then we wrap it around the barrel and then we twist wrap it around the barrel and then twist so we're sliding down as we wrap and then twist what that does is it twists the hair onto itself so as it cools, it stays pretty tight together. So that's what's going to give a little bit more definition to the shape of the curl versus something that's more just simply flat wrapped around the barrel. Let's take the next section. Now with this one, we'll vary the direction of the curl so that we get a nice lived in feeling. On this next one, let's use the Marcel iron so that those of you that are using a Marcel, you get to see what that looks like. So first one, we wrapped back away from the face. This one, let's wrap towards the face. 
I personally feel more comfortable with the Marcel in my hand, mainly because professionals, we tend to start with a Marcel iron. If you can learn at home to use a Marcel iron, it's gonna give you more versatility. So again, we start first by just taking the hair through the iron once to introduce some heat and then wrap the hair and then we spin and that gives it the twist. Wrap to the barrel and then twist. Wrap to the barrel, twist. So you can see why it's called the wrap and twist. I was telling Tiana, I think it kind of sounds like a dance move. And then we'll just leave it twisted up like that to cool. Let's do one more section. And again, we'll vary the, the direction within the section. So we wrapped towards the face on that one. This one, we will go away from the face. Let's go back to the spring iron. Just one quick pass to introduce some heat. Wrap to the barrel, and then untwist. Wrap to the barrel, untwist. Wrap to the barrel, and twist. Wrap, twist. And it's up to you how much of the ends you want to include in there. If you want a little bit more polish on the ends, you can continue to wrap through the ends. Last one. Now this is right beside her face, so we are going to keep that away from the face. It just is a more modern feel to it. We used to see more of a wrap towards the face, but that was very 990s feeling. So we're gonna stick with modern and keep the wrap away from the face. Wrap the hair and then twist. Wrap around the barrel and twist. We'll just touch that end just a little bit with some heat just to give it a little polish and let it cool. So you can see this is creating much tighter of a pattern for it to cool in. So it's gonna result in a little more definition to that wave. So again, just gonna simply proceed in the same manner, working up the head on this side, and then we'll go to the opposite side and work up that side in the same way. Okay, so we've completed both sides of Tiana's head with that wrap and twist technique. Now, I did start to play with the hair a little bit, Bad me, sorry about that. But you can see that this one I did not mess with yet, and it's cooled into a much more cylindrical piece that has a tighter pattern to it. So as we turn Tiana around, and we start to work our hands through her hair, what you're going to notice is a much more kind of wrinkled effect to the wave. You're gonna see more definition to the different pieces. It's gonna create more separation. And that's because as you heat it, as you twist it up to cool it, it forms more ridges in the hair and it gives that definition to the curl. So still a very loose lived in technique, but you can see very different from that first technique we showed you with the one and a half wrap. Now a great way to introduce even more natural texture is to st start to combine those two techniques for a really super lived in feel. All right, on to technique number three, and this is gonna be one of the most simple techniques, and it's gonna remind you of the first technique, but this is just a simple flat wrap down the surface of the iron. But we're going to do it in a more defined way, and we're going to do it closer to the head all the way to almost the ends, and we're going to go with a smaller iron. What we're looking for with this technique is a little bit more curl pattern. So we're looking to make this a little bit more bold. So that's why we're using the flat wrap technique. We want that ribbony sort of feel, and we want more definition. So we'll take the same size sections that we have been. There's still plenty of product in there, so we don't need to reapply product. We'll grab our iron. We're now going to the one inch signature series spring iron. And you'll see we're on the color treated setting. Again, that color treated setting does not go above 392 degrees. So we know that we're not gonna fry Tiana's hair or remove the color from it. The high setting goes to 410, which is still below that 450 range that a lot of irons go to. And the reason that we don't go that high is we don't feel it's necessary to, to put that much stress on the hair. So we'll take the section, we'll open up the spoon of the iron, 
Now we're gonna start much closer up to Tiana's head and we're going to slide that up and then make sure that the hair continues to go flat to the iron. We do not want this hair to curl and twist onto the iron. So you can see it's just creating a ribbon down the iron. And we'll take those ends and just gently lay them across the tip of the iron. If you don't get all the ends there, don't get stressed out about it because again, things are looking a little more loose. So now you can see we have much more defined shape to that. And this is gonna give us a, a more curly effect versus that super loose wave. It'll still brush out into more of a wave, of course, but we'll see more de definition to the curl pattern. By using the slightly smaller iron, that increases the tightness of the pattern as well. And we're using our dry sectioning clips so that that way, as we're working through the hair, we're not putting creases on the hair. Now, just like with the one and a half inch, we do have the one inch Artist Series Marcellin Wand. Just like the other iron, you can detach the spoon off of this. And especially for these types of techniques, this is really handy. It makes life super easy because you can just use it as a wand and you don't have any spoon or handle to get in your way. So again, wrap to the iron pretty close to the head. Now watch, just kind of slide that up the iron to make yourself room. Keep it flat to the iron, just like you're wrapping a ribbon around the iron. We did make the barrel one inch longer than most irons. And you can see how long Tiana's hair is and we can flat wrap all of that hair to the iron. Now, if you wanna check your heat, just come up and just touch on the surface of the hair and you should feel it pretty warm on the outside. And we'll let that drop. Now, if you wanted to really keep a lot more definition, you could always wrap these up and pin them to allow them to cool longer in a curled form. Because we're not super worried about it being perfect, perfect curls, we're gonna go ahead and just let it just sit with gravity, and that'll help to add just a touch of stretch to the hair. If you feel like it's getting too curly, while it's hot, you can always grab and kind of pull down on it, and that will actually pull some of that tightness of the curl out. We're gonna keep working in a similar pattern, similar direction, wrapping, making sure that the hair stays flat on the iron. And the next technique that we show you, you'll see why we're making sure it's flat to the iron. Don't burn yourself like I just did. <laughs> it's always one of the risks when you're working with an iron. Get a few little scars on your hand and they won't hurt, hurt anymore. <laughs> just drop that and let that cool. We're gonna work in the same direction away from the face with this particular technique because we are keeping more of that uh, solid curl pattern. But if you wanted a little more randomness, you could vary section size, you could vary direction, just like we have in the other techniques. So I'm gonna continue around the head in this exact same shape and then you can see what this looks like in the finished product. All right, this time I remembered not to mess with the hair to just let it cool so you can see how it looks as it just starts to cool fresh off the iron. So let's unveil. Let's turn Tiana around. And let's start to move this hair around. 
So I'm sure you can kind of predict what this is going to come out to be, which is a much, much fuller, tighter pattern. You're gonna to start to see a lot more bounce because of the circular motion of, of the curl. And that's one of the things we have to realize is a bigger iron doesn't necessarily create more body because a bigger iron creates a softer wave. And so a lot of times if you're looking for more expansive kind of curl like this, dropping down on your iron size is actually a better idea. And I bet some of you at home probably thought when you saw this that it's gonna turn out like little orphan Annie curls, but it doesn't. Especially after you start to move your hands through and loosen it up, you can see ooh, we get back into a nice wave pattern. This one definitely borders between wave and curl. But very beautiful. Really elegant. This is a great sort of set to do before doing kind of up styles or something for the evening. So again, a flat wrap technique on a one inch iron is gonna give you more of that full defined sort of pattern with a really nice bouncy feel to it. So this next look, the fourth look, isn't probably something you're going to put on everyday clientele, but it's something we really love for evening looks or nights out on the town, and it's called the Hollywood Wave or the Red Carpet Wave. So we're gonna stick with a one inch iron, again, because that one inch size we find puts a little bit more of a definition to it, and you'll see why in just a second. We'll turn Tiana around just like we have for the last four. <laughs> Same sort of pattern. We're going to take just a little bit thicker of a section and we're gonna break this into two pieces. We're gonna keep the sections more square this time instead of them being more rectangular. So we'll split that back into two pieces that are relatively square. Grab our one inch iron. We'll start with the spring and then we'll show you the Marcel as well. It's gonna be the really similar technique. So the pattern is going to be wrist, watch, wrist, watch with the hand that's holding the hair. So we're still just going to wrap the hair down the iron, but now as we turn our wrist up and then wrap and end with the watch towards us, turn the wrist up, and with the watch towards us, turn the wrist up, watch goes towards us, what it does is it puts a twist wrap on the outside and then a flat wrap on the inside. We'll just let that cook for a moment. Get it nice and warm. The twist wrap's gonna take just a little bit more heat because it's bundled up. And then we turn the iron vertical and let it fall down. We're gonna let that cool for just a moment and then I can brush through it real quick and you can see how this turns into this very, very cool ridged technique. So again, take the section, open up the iron, wrist comes up, as it comes around we go to the watch, wrist comes up, that gives it the twist, wrist comes up, that gives it the twist, and with the watch, wrist comes up, and with the watch. Turn the iron vertical and allow that to drop off of there. If you're working with someone with really resistant hair, you may want to go ahead and pin these for them to cool. But her hair is really holding it nicely since we did that pre-texture. Let's do the next section. This time we'll grab our Marcel. If you have a Marcel that the blade does not attach, it looks very, very similar to what we just did with the spring iron. You're just going to take your square section, open the spoon and work. But cool little innovation on our Marcel iron, click the detach, pull the spoon off. Now you can just use it as a wand. And this is a great technique if you just have a wand at home, you can do it with that as well. 
So um, we'll start with the watch towards us. Wrist comes up, creates that twist. Wrist comes up, creates that twist. Watch, wrist, watch, wrist, watch, wrist, watch. And it just naturally, if you get that pattern down, forms the flat and then the twist. Flat, twist, flat, twist, flat, flat twist. That's what builds those ridges into the shape. And that's really what brings in that red carpet wave sort of appearance. People a lot of times think that this was more of a Marcel wave, but what's different about this versus a Marcel wave is it has a little bit more body to it. It has more wave to it. Show you one more. So start with it flat with your wrist up, wrist comes up, drop to the iron, watch wrist, watch wrist, watch wrist, watch. You just continue that pattern until you get those ends on there. Turn the iron vertically, let those pop off of there. Now we're gonna continue the rest of the way around the head. I'm gonna wait to brush this out until it's nice and cool. I know I said I was gonna brush one out for you, but let's wait, make sure we get the cool cooling factor so it really seals in there. Then it's really awesome when you brush through it at the end to see it all come together. So um, I'm gonna finish this up and then we're gonna brush it out. All right, so this is what Tiana looks like. Very kind of Lord of the Rings kind of looking at this point without brushing through it yet. Now, this one's really fun because it sort of just springs into the pattern. We're going to take the Artist Series Finishing Brush. This is just a boar bristle brush. And we're going to really softly work the brush through to start to incorporate things. But you can see it just instantly comes back into this really cool wave pattern. And you can see why it's important to keep your sections clean, keep your pattern pretty clean with this one, because you can actually get this really awesome wave pattern into it. And if you grab some hairspray, you can really define out these ridges. It makes a really classic looking blow dry, or I guess not a blow dry, iron finish. So again, just with that Artist Series finishing brush, being real gentle, not a ton of tension here, just enough to separate that pattern out and give it some fluff. I'll be honest, the one thing I personally have a challenge with on this that Sam's really good at is I have a little bit harder time getting my sides to match up with this. I do have the ability to switch my hands. So on this side, wrapping with my left hand, on this side, wrapping with my right hand to try and get them as consistent as possible. But even just little things like consistency of tension, section size, the length and time and amount of heat you're pressing into the hair, each of those things can kind of change the end result. So consistency is really important. This one actually turned out pretty awesome for me. Usually one side isn't quite as balanced as the other, but this time actually came out pretty awesome. Good for me, right? <laughs> really fun technique. This gives you that Hollywood wave or that red carpet wave appearance. And it's much, much easier than trying to do it with a Marcel iron. We're going to switch things up a little bit now and change tools because we know that many of you are using a flat iron to do your curling techniques. This first one is my personal favorite. It's fast, it's easy, and I think it just creates beautiful wave patterns. We're going to go right back into our sectioning that we used before and play around with this sectioning. 
because even the sectioning will change your results, whether you take vertical sections, horizontal sections, diagonal sections, all of that will change things slightly. So you wanna play around with those things. And that's when a mannequin head is really a nice thing to have because mannequin head won't complain if they sit for four hours like she already has, poor Tiana. <laughs> We're going to take and break those horizontal sections into more vertical sections. When I'm doing this on my guests, I like to stand above them and point the iron down. At home, my guests have told me that they have a much better time with this, working with the iron straight up and down. So play with those two positions and see what's best for you. Couple of things that are gonna make you successful with this. Number one is to not grab tight with the tension as soon as you put the iron in. If you grab tight with the tension and as soon as you address the iron into the hair, what's going to happen is you're gonna create a crease. So the first thing that should happen is open, start to move and turn, and then start to compress. Notice how I'm holding the tail and just allowing that to feed down into the iron and just work, work, work until you get to the ends. And once it's there, give it a little twist into place with your finger so that it cools in a coiled state. That's gonna really help to preserve the, the texture. Now, typically, if we're working with a flat iron, we're looking for loose texture. We're looking for movement. We're not really looking for a defined curling iron sort of technique. So we are going to vary the angle of the iron, or sorry, vary the direction of the iron. So that one I wrapped back away from the face, this next one, now I'm wrapping this section towards the face. And by varying the direction, it's going to create a much more lived in sort of feel. Now what's nice with doing flat iron curls is each one, because there's not a consistent size to a barrel, is going to feel slightly different and it depends on how much you turn the iron, how much tension you put on the hair, how long you uh, leave the heat on the hair. So we also suggest that you vary the section size. And that again will add some variability to it and give you a really natural finish. So because the one underneath it was wrapped back, this one we're going to now turn forward. I'm gonna take my wrist, put it in kind of an awkward position at first so it makes it easier as I turn to keep my wrist in a nice position. So we're gonna let that cool in a nice coiled state. Go to the next one. And you can see this happens really quite quickly if you want a tighter curl, just slow down. So on this next one, let's make it tighter. So we'll twist, and now we're just gonna slow down. We're gonna introduce a little bit more tension. So just compress tighter. It's the exact same technique. And you'll notice that's gonna give us a much tighter coil. So you really can vary so many things with this technique based on your end result that you're looking for. But again, we suggest that you vary things so that it has that very natural wave sort of technique. So again, I'm gonna keep working. We're gonna go up the left side then complete the right, and we'll show you the finished product. Okay, so wrapped up both sides with that flat iron technique. You can see how it looks as it cools. It's still pretty loose and tenderly, but then once we decide to loosen it up, bring the hands in, just give it a shake. It's gonna be very, very natural, very lived in. And this is for that guest that really does not wanna have any definition to the curl someone that just really wants it to look like almost wash and wear kind of hair, as if they just have a gorgeous natural wave to their hair. So 
So a pretty simple technique, probably something that many of you have already learned, but hopefully some of those little tips and tricks have added to your repertoire. And our next technique is going to be really super simple. It's just really all about hand painting. All right, guys, thanks for sticking in there with us. I know it's been kind of a long video, but hopefully you're getting lots of content that's good for you. One more technique, and you'll notice I didn't stretch dry her hair back out. I actually left the wave from the last technique. We're gonna crank up the flat iron this time. We're gonna go to a high heat. Again, this only goes to 410, so it's not scorching hot, but this is a really light touch technique, so it's okay to have the iron a little hotter. We're not gonna put tons of tension on the hair. So this is a fun technique because it's really just about hand painting the hair where you want to see the curl. This is something that actually my wife used to do all the time and I don't think she knew that it was such a cool technique and it, she used it because she has natural curly hair and she would want more definition just in spots within the curl. And then I went to a class at the Travis Parker Academy recently and our friend Jude Viola, who's one of the educators there, she showed us this technique more from a, just a really freehand light touch sort of motion. So what's great about this technique is that you can define right where you want things. So use it a lot here around the face where it's just like, okay, well, I wanna put a little bend around her cheekbone because she's got great cheekbones. We wanna bring that out. So just a really incredibly light touch. I'm almost not putting actual tension on the hair. I'm just letting it kind of float through the iron. Then don't pull because remember if I pull, we're gonna take that back out, be very gentle, and then just shape the ends the opposite direction so you get a little bit of an S curve to things. And again, just being really super gentle with that touch. And that way you can put that wave exactly where you want it to sit. And again, this is super nice for around the face. I don't know that you would choose to do a whole head of hair this way, but what's really cool is with, especially with someone that already has some wave and texture in their hair, maybe after you've already done some other type of curling technique, this is great because it brings out more definition and you can define exactly where you want those waves to sit. So let's go back one more. And we'll just gently allow that iron to create that wave and curl. And you can see I'm moving, I'm holding the tail of the hair, but I'm moving with the actual iron. Because if I hold the tail still, then I'm gonna put tension on the hair. And don't worry, it is on high heat. But like I said, because we're being so gentle with the touch of the iron, and not really putting a lot of tension, we're not exposing her fragile hair to excessive heat at this point. So kind of fun, yeah, you can just adjust and place things right where you want them. Let's match that on the opposite side here. And be conscious of which direction you're moving the hair you want it to go away from the face or towards the face. Actually, I like the way that one's kind of kicking that way, so we'll just work with it. And that's the real fun part of this is that you can get really creative. You can literally just place it exactly where you envision it to be. So I'm gonna continue going through the head. I'm gonna just play around, add some definition and texture in different places, and then we'll look at the end result. As you saw around the face, just kind of gave it a couple little bends just to frame the face nicely, place those pieces just where we want them. And then through the back, 
what was a nice addition is since there was already texture under the bottom, we really just took a couple pieces on this surface and defined those out, which just brings a whole new feeling to the hair. So it doesn't always have to be this huge process to get this done. And this is great for second day hair, especially after you've woken up. Most of the hair is still looking pretty good, but you just need to do some touch up work. This hand painting technique is great for that. Oh my gosh, my friends, we've made it. Six different techniques. These are our six favorites right now that we feel are really effective for you at achieving the looks that your guests are asking for in the salon. Some of them are curling iron techniques, some of them are flat iron techniques, so mix and match for your guests. And we hope that there was some things that were fresh for you to inspire some creativity behind the chair as well. We of course wanna thank our beautiful model, Tiana. She spent quite a few hours here today. She was so patient and so sweet and kind and just kept this beautiful grin the whole time. <laughs> but she's a hairdresser. She knows what it's like to go through these things. So thank you so much for doing that for us. And if you have any questions, you have any comments, any of your favorite curling techniques, please leave them in the comments. You know we love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sandia.